We've just got our hands on a brand new Star Wars Outlaws trailer and I'm going to run through the whole thing with you frame by frame and point out some of the awesome details you may have missed on your first watch, what all of these details mean and what we can actually expect from this game. Thanks to Ubisoft for sharing the video with me ahead of going public so I could spend the last few days making this video for you and let's start with the trailer's opening shot which you may recognize from episode 8 The Last Jedi if I just go ahead and place these clips side by side here for you and this is the coastal city that is called Canto bite which is located on the desert planet of Cantonica. It was a destination for wealthy individuals which was filled with casinos, racetracks and is pretty much the Las Vegas of Star Wars so it's the perfect spot for us to bamboozle some unsuspecting people out of some in-game credits I'm sure. Now in the next shot we also see two ships move into this frame here which are police speeders called the Zephyr GB-134 which we also saw in the Last Jedi film so I wouldn't be surprised if we end up trying to hide from them as they patrol around the casinos if we do get caught stealing from gamblers. We then see our first look at who is likely to be the main antagonist or villain in the game, who is later named in the trailer as Slero, leader of the Zerik Besh criminal family, and more on them later as he is addressing representatives of other established criminal syndicates such as the Pikes, who recently featured in the Book of Boba Fett TV series, followed by Crimson Dawn, which was established by Darth Maul during the events of the Solo movie, and at the time of this game taking place, which is between the solo film and episode six, just as an FYI. Now, Maul is no longer alive, thanks to Obi-Wan's silky smooth moves in Rebels, with Crimson Dawn being presumably ran by Kira at this time. So maybe we will see Amelia Clark in this game, fingers crossed. And last but not least, in this same clip, we do have the Hutt's representative here, which we all know at this time is led by Jabba the Hutt. Now, this next clip shows us a marketplace, which I reckon is located on the planet of Akiva as it is the same environmental design that we've already been teased with by the developers in the behind the scenes trailer last year, with Akiva being a remote planet in the Outer Rim that had a sizable droid construction facility that supported the Empire during the Clone Wars and is still loosely under Empire control in this game, which has since diminished and has become a kind of hub for criminal activity with its catacombs underneath the city of Mira being used by syndicates to avoid any run-ins with law enforcement or the Empire empire itself. Now moving on, we then get a look at Kay Vess, the protagonist in this game, preparing to go on a mission or a heist, as this is what this game is all about, according to the developers. And the thing she's actually grabbing off the table, if I just pause it here, is actually her grapple hook, which we briefly saw used in the gameplay showcase last year, which appears as a button prompt in game when you kind of get close enough to use it, and which we also see in use a little later on in this trailer. In fact, there's a kind of better look at it from the official art breakdown PDF from Massive Studios where it kind of sits on the back of her belt which does look pretty cool to be fair. We also get a good look at her blaster, her comlink on her wrist and her jacket here and I think the detail does look excellent to be fair. Hopefully we can kind of customize the comlink in game as I know that the blaster and jacket are definitely customizable and changeable as stated by the developers in previous interviews over the last six months. Now our next clip here sees Kay slamming this dude's head onto the table which uh, isn't really particularly ideal for him but upon inspection he does look like a solistan who were a species of humanoids that were experts at manufacturing scientific and technological development the most famous solistan in the series being Nyan Nub who was a pilot for the Republic and a former arms dealer and smuggler so I do imagine we'll see some nods to him in this game now after this clip we hear this guy introduce himself listen to this we need it last what do you want? Now, this dude is called Jalen, as Kay actually name dropped him in the official cinematic trailer last year. So listen to this again. Get off my ship, Jalen. Give me a chance. Now, he does look very familiar in appearance to Kyle Katarn, who was a very famous Force-sensitive human who used to be an Imperial officer who then defected to the Rebellion and became an inside informant. But unfortunately, as cool as that could have been for this game's storyline and in kind of including him in the game, the developers have confirmed that Jalen is his own character and he is not Kyle. In any case, he goes on to say this. Zarek Besh. They're new, rich, and lethal. Now, Zarek Besh was one of the great crime families during the reign of the Galactic Empire, kind of like the Mafia, but in Star Wars, who had intricate dealings with the Empire and seems to be the kind of main syndicate at the core of this game's story. And following this, Jalen goes on to say that we need to rob Slero's fortune and buy our freedom, which I imagine is the main heist 
that we'll need to successfully complete during the narrative. Now, in this clip here, it does look like Kay is on Kanto Bite again, stealthing around the compound, leaning against the walls for cover, which seems to be an automatic animation as we saw from the gameplay trailer last year. So no proactive wall selections like Massive Studios developed for the Division series. We then see Kay going face to face with Han Solo, who has been frozen in Carbonite, thanks to Darth Vader, and who was then delivered to Jabba via Boba Fett, with Jabba displaying him as a trophy in his palace. This also narrows down the timeline of the game, thanks to this clip, to around three ABY, which is shortly after the Empire Strikes Back, which means that the Bounty Wars have ended because Han is in Jabba's palace and the Crimson Dawn faction is at its peak influence and strength at this time, which also lends itself to suggest that the game is taking place during a very short window of peace and prosperity between the criminal organizations. Hence, everyone kind of sitting around down at the table chatting here, which happens before all hell breaks loose in the Syndicate War, which is initiated by Kira and her Crimson Dawn faction against all other syndicates and the Empire. So perhaps we will see how that all starts here in in this game maybe we even contribute to that which would be pretty cool it does sound really great to be fair now if you are enjoying this breakdown so far please do leave a very swift like down below and if you do end up giving the game a go please do consider using the andy reloads credit code at ubisoft checkout because you will get one penny or one cent off your purchase which i know is an absolutely outstanding deal <laughs> but jokes aside thank you for keeping me in mind i do really appreciate it very much it kind of helps support me on youtube so cheers again now this clip here looks like to be on the planet of tashara which was known as the gem of the underworld with its moon being considered the ultimate hive of criminal activity now the reason i say that is martha jonkers the associate art director of the game said in a behind the scenes trailer that the city of miragona is a city that's been built in to the rock which has then been carved out by the wind which will be ever present on Tashara which can be seen in the background of this clip here. Now our next frame looks like Akiva which we spoke about earlier and that's thanks to our previous cinematic trailer clip where Kay is flying into land here as the Capitol building is clearly visible if I just kind of put them together for you. We also get our first look at Tatooine in this trailer in the follow-up environmental clip here and that's because of the iconic two suns on the planet on the horizon as you can see here as well as this location clearly being Moss Eisley spaceport which I'll let Obi-Wan sum up very nicely for you. Moss Eisley spaceport. You will never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy. Now the reason why I say Moss Eisley is because the tower here is quite unique which we also see quite clearly from episode four, as you can see here, with Julian Gerardi, the creative director, mentioning in an interview with StarWars.com recently that we will be able to experience what the moisture farms are actually like on Moss Eisley, kind of like virtual tourism. So I cannot wait to see that, especially as Ubisoft, to be fair to them, do really good stuff historically in virtual tourism in their games, like the Discovery Tours that they put in Assassin's Creed. So I'm very, very much looking forward to running around Tatooine and experiencing everything in person but just not the sand because you know it's coarse and rough and irritating and it gets everywhere now following on from that we get a quick clip of some fancy looking dudes here who are new to the series and they are called the ashiga clan as confirmed by navid kavari the narrative director recently where their members are focused on respecting honor tradition and and history. They're a species of insectile humanoids which have no eyes or mouth but are capable of sensing the environment around them through the hairs on their body. So I'm really quite interested to see how this works in gameplay going forward if they have specific animations or reactions because of that. We then see Kay meeting the presumed leader of the Pikes who says something very interesting indeed. In actual fact, I'm going to play it for you. So listen to this. You're new to this world. What's your problem? Come back when you're not. Now this suggests to me that this cutscene is what happens when you don't have enough of a positive relationship with a syndicate in game, meaning that we'll need to go on to complete certain quests and side content to increase our reputation with the Pikes so we can then open up new opportunities and dialogue options with syndicate leaders. With Julian Gerardi, again, the creative director stating that these relationships can also be negatively affected, which is a nice segue onto that topic now in this next clip where Kay meets Jabba himself and says the following. 
Look, don't try anything. I got a whole crew surrounding the. Okay, we're skipping that part. So perhaps this is another one of those in-game cutscenes where we've been captured by bounty hunters working for Jabba as we've fallen into poor reputational standing with the Hut Syndicate and may also be the reason why we ourselves are sliding into the Sarlacc pit a little later on in the trailer, as you can see here, as Jabba liked to do in the films, of course. So maybe this is the reputational sentence that Jabba issues in-game if the Huts want us dead and we do end up being captured. Now, in this next clip, we see Kay's trailer Trailblazer ship, which has been captured by the Empire, with Julian Satan recently once more that Kay acquires her ship illegally, which may be what we're being teased with here, followed by Nyx fetching a rifle from its storage unit and subsequently returning it to Kay to presumably use. We actually saw this gameplay mechanic in action in the previous preview, as well as Nyx being confirmed to be able to press buttons whilst we remain stealthed, as well as being able to distract enemies, which I assume is what we see here in this follow-up clip where Nyx bites a guard's hand allowing us to come in for a quick stealth takedown, but this doesn't seem to be a necessary requirement for stealth takedowns as we've already seen again Kay do it without Nick's involvement, which is good to have as well as a kind of multiple different stealth takedowns to keep it fresh. Now, this clip took me a little by surprise, to be honest with you, because I wasn't expecting to see a small taste of parkour here in this trailer with Kay sliding down the roofs and jumping between buildings, which looks like the planet of Kimiji, which we've already seen in the Rise of the Skywalker film and was a frozen mountain this planet that became a haven for criminals, particularly the Ashiga clan who have made it their home base and who we just spoke about. Now, Kay goes on to say in the trailer that we need the right crew. And while she was saying that, these companions then popped up on the screen, which I'm assuming is who we're going to be able to take with us on missions or recruit during the narrative. Firstly, we have ND5, who is a BX commander droid that was a veteran of the Clone Wars that has subsequently turned to the profession of enforcing on behalf of the Syndicate Underworld. We then get a quick clip of a rodent-like humanoid here which is a Chadra fan with some of their kind being famous bounty hunters which fits quite nicely into the storyline here. On top of that it looks like we may be getting our own 3 PO series protocol droid which is equipped with over 6 million forms of communication and language which I imagine would be of great help to us with all of the different syndicates and life forms that we'll be meeting in this game. Now in this follow-up clip we can see Kay without her jacket trying to escape from the Zerik Besh clan in her trailblazer ship or perhaps this is the quest where where she illegally comes to own it and not in the Empire clip that we spoke about earlier. Or alternatively, maybe this is just a cutscene of where we actually break out of jail and escape after being caught by the bounty hunters for each specific syndicate. We then hear Slero say this in the trailer. I hire you because you are one of the best hunters in the Outer Rim. And then the bounty hunter then goes on to respond with this. She's more connected than you let on, Slero. So perhaps one of the reasons why Slero wants Kay apprehended is because she's made a deal with Jalen or other syndicates. And because of that, we now have more support from criminal organizations opposing Zarek Besh, which in turn provides us with friendly NPCs who then help us fight off apprehension from bounty hunters like this NPC in the game. Now, back to the ship. We've seen this clip before, but if we compare the cockpit here to the one where she was trying to escape that we just spoke about, it's very clear it's been upgraded. The ship, I mean, which is visually nice to see that distinction in game as the developers have confirmed that this is a mechanic that we do have some power over, some sway over, so we can customize it to our will, which is good to see here. We can then see Kay flying away from an Imperial Star Destroyer and notice how it's missing its shield generators here, which are usually located on the top of the spacecraft, which may be because Kay has already destroyed them during a mission to then subsequently escape or to open it up for attack as we can see a rebel x-wing following Kay's ship here so perhaps she has temporarily aligned herself with the rebel alliance in this mission to then escape from the empire now we also get a very quick clip of the speeder flying over the water and i wouldn't at all be surprised that before we can do this we then have to upgrade our own bike to be able to actually fly across all kinds of terrain so I hope that's not the case, but I can imagine that is going to be the case. But I would say that the water physics do look good in reaction to the bike. Now, we also get another shot here, what seems to be a new Star Wars species with Julian Gerite stating that every planet we visit will have its own distinct profile with a wild living ecosystem. And it certainly looks like that here, as I don't actually recognize this animal. But if you do, please do share down below in the comments. Now, when it comes to these droids, I do want to bring your attention to their blasters, which are the TL-50 
heavy repeaters which were specifically manufactured for Imperial Special Forces, which is very interesting to see them used in this kind of droid context clip here. Now, as for this fight on the frozen planet of Kamiji though, it looks like we can melee whilst in active combat followed by a quick blaster range shot. So that's encouraging to see as we may be able to use melee and blaster combos here in this game. We then get another look at our grapple hook. So expect a lot of environmental puzzles and traversal options here in this game followed by this sneaky editing of these two clips in particular from Ubisoft here. As we can see Kay running away from Jabba's henchmen as we can identify his palace in the background, which is then followed by Kay falling into that Sarlacc pit, which in canon is far away from the palace. So not on his doorstep as this trailer would kind of lead you to believe. And I'm interested to see if we can do a Boba Fett in this game and get out of the pit, but without his Beskar armor, I'm not sure how that's gonna work exactly. Now, this bad man here is a Death Trooper who is an elite variant of Stormtroopers specializing in stealth and espionage. But what's super intriguing about this unit is that they were founded and created by Moff Gideon, which may be a very subtle tease that we may see him in this game considering Giancarlo Esposito who plays Moff has worked extensively with Ubisoft before on Far Cry 6 with their motion capture team so it wouldn't be a crazy thing to do by giving him a quick call and seeing if he fancied doing some cameos for this game. Now following that we see Kay running away from some sort of syndicate lair which looks like the Ishiga clan if I just zoom in here for you as well as a new species of spider that I haven't yet seen in the Star Wars universe again looks like we're getting a lot of new wild life for this game but as for this dune worm this is actually called a crate dragon which is the apex predator on tatooine which we saw in the mandalorian season 2 tv show and by loading up a banther with explosives and then subsequently detonating inside of this dragon and i can't wait to fight this in game i'm sure it's going to be great fun just trying to figure out how we can defeat it ourselves now i'm currently in the process of making more detailed star wars outlaws videos for you in fact one should be on your screen right now so give that a click and i'll see you there in in just a second. Big thanks to Voynich and Nika for their immense Star Wars knowledge and for helping me make this video for you. Link to Voynich's YouTube channel is down below, so definitely give him a sub. Very much worth your time. Katina Drinks, in fact, I think are on him right now, and I'll see you in that next video in just a second.